Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you some tips about caning a chair. Now, this was a project that um, was brought to me by an old man who wanted to learn how to cane a chair, and I'd never done it before, uh, so I had to go to YouTube, and I love YouTube, <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so I had to go to YouTube and I had to find some videos um, and learn how to cane a chair so that I could teach this man because I really hadn't uh, done it. He, he assumed that I could do anything um, because because I'm, I make baskets and and that, you know, I, I have artistic talents and everything he sees me do, it turns out wonderful and he just has high expectations that I could do anything. So he said, I, I want to cane this chair. It was a family heirloom and, and, and I want you to help me and we'll do it together. And I said, okay. So I'm gonna be putting some insert photos because I want you to see this man and I'm gonna be talking about this man throughout the video. And I want you to see uh, pictures of him at, uh, as we talk. And I'm just gonna share some things that I learned through the process of caning a chair. Um, some life lessons and some just about the actual process of working in caning a chair. An older gentleman who has been trying to learn a new craft. He came to me, he wanted to know how to cane a chair. He had a chair that belonged to his grandmother. He wanted to fix it because it was old and it was worn out. So I said, sure, I'll help you. So I've never caned a chair before, and but I'm always willing to learn something new. And so I went on YouTube and I found a guy that gives tutorials about how to cane a chair so that I could learn how this to cane a chair with a herringbone pattern so that I could teach this old man. This old man is 75 years old and we have been working on this chair for months. We I usually give him about two hours a week. He comes, my husband picks him up and brings him to my house. Um, he can only come here when my husband's home because I just don't feel it's appropriate for me to be with another man um, alone. It's just, you know, inappropriate. So it's always with my husband around and my husband does all the transporting and bringing him here, taking him home. And over the course of this time, um, he's been in, in and out of the hospital uh, like three times. He has been sick and in the hospital and so times we couldn't work on it. Currently, he is dying. He is at home. He's in hospice care and his health is declining. And I really feel bad that he did not finish his chair. So I am going to finish it tonight or tomorrow and I want to present his chair to him so that he can see his chair. Hopefully I can get it done in time before he d leaves this world and goes to heaven. I want him to see the chair finished. I know it has been a goal of his. I just spoke with his daughter just this evening and she said that even this week, this past week, he's just out of the hospital. He's, he's very weak. He's very, his health is very poor. He wanted to come over and work on his chair, but they told him, no, you can't do that. He can barely stand up. He can barely walk. How can he come over here and work on his chair? Hopefully I get it done before he dies. He's done most of it. Um, I'd say he's probably gotten three quarters of it done. And I can work a lot faster than he can, so I think I could do it in just a few hours. As I've been working this project with the old man, I have been learning a lot of things. You know, we've had some mistakes and we've had some problems. We've had to do some repairs and we've had to overcome some obstacles. And so I'm going to be sharing you some of the tips that I learned. I'm not going to do a complete tutorial because it's not necessary when there's such a great one already on YouTube. Um, but I will share a little bit more details about some of the process um, and a few tips, to, things to combat and problems to overcome that you can um, help. It'll work with this other tutorial so that you can be successful in this project if you so choose to learn how to cane a chair. I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I have over 20 students uh, currently. I have not charged this man a dime for my service, for my time. I've been giving him two hours a week and I do this out of the goodness of my heart. This is my charitable work. He's a dear sweet man, he's a retired preacher and he would give the shirt off his back to anyone. 
He's such an inspiration. This man has taught me so much. One of the things he has taught me is that no matter how old you are, you're never too old to learn something new. He has taught me to just keep on going, even when you don't feel like it. Sometimes he would come over here and work on his chair, and he would go home in such pain. He'd have to go right to bed because it was such hard work. Sometimes he'd be sick before he came over, but he was determined he was gonna come over here and he was gonna work on his chair. I admire his, his drive. I admire his will. I admire his determination. And even though over time, the process became really hard for him because his immobility in his shoulders and the pain in his hands and the weakness he suffered. And I, I watched him struggle. Um, and sometimes that struggle was a mental struggle because it's harder for him to, it's hard for him to see. It's hard for him to count. It's hard for him to think as he, as I watched him decay in his health. I know that he at one time was a robust, wise man, very strong, and was able to do many things. I mean, throughout this project, he has actually come up with some new tools, and I'll be sh sharing with you the tools that he came up with and the things that he thought about that could help make the job a little bit easier. Some of his tools didn't work, and some were great. So I'll be sharing those with you. So um, I hope that you will get a benefit from this video and there will be an additional help with some little tips about caning a chair. Here's the chair. Um, we are doing the herringbone pattern and he finished the seat and we were working on the back part of the chair. and. Uh, I want to show you the back of the chair has the same has the same herringbone pattern. Underneath the seat, it's just a regular weave because under the underneath, it doesn't matter so much. Um, let me move it to the light so you can see it better. It doesn't matter so much what the design is. So, and there are probably a few mistakes in here. But that's okay because that's underneath and hardly anybody's going to see that part of it. Use the herringbone pattern on the back of the chair and on the front of the chair and on the seat. Now the tutorial that I referenced explains the whole process and how to do this part so I'm not even going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk about this part. Now this Part of the chair is pretty square. You start with um, these runners that come up and down and they are held together with staples. See, there's staples here. Um, let me see, there are some staples. Now when we work the pattern, you don't see any staples. We do um, we hide our ends. You can see this little end. I'm going to show you how I hide that in a minute. And if the, most, if the staples are hidden by the weave, then I, you don't take them out. But if they do show up, and I'll probably have one that will show up, I'll show you how to remove those staples. All right, let's talk about materials. Right, tools for this project. Butter knife. Just a simple butter knife works. Now, he took these knives and ground off the rough edge so we would not have any uh, serrated edge that m could possibly tear up the cane because its cane can break very easily. So he made two knives like this. Um, a pair of sharp pointed scissors is needed because sometimes you have to cut the cane. A pair of needle nose pliers Preferably the kind that the jewelry makers use that does not have any teeth here that it's smooth. And here is another tool um, that he made. I mean, he went home and, you know, he was, we, we first he made a little wooden wedge and he was having trouble with it. And he needed something a little longer to help him. But we used this tool to, um, to push the, well, I'll show you how it's used in a little bit. But he, 
he he fixed the end like this and then he put the rubber thing on the other end so that uh, he could you know use it for pushing you'll see I, I like this tool this tool works great um, it probably could use a little bit more sanding on it I think what I'll do is I'll sand it smooth and I'll probably take my wood burner and engrave his name on it and this will be a little memento of the man that I don't want to forget so these are the tools that are needed to work the uh, chair. You also need a bucket to put the cane in. I have one in here that's soaking. It does not need to soak very long. If they are dry, they will break easy. The water helps to soften the cane so that it can bend a little bit and you have a little bit of flexibility. But you don't want it too wet because it can darken the color or it can really break if you pull too hard on it. So I have um, here some pieces that are ready and I will, when I, when I get almost finished with this one, I will put another one in, but I'm not going to put them all in at once because I don't want them to get too dark in color or to get too, too wet. You can see that I have organized them with these little clips because when they come into a bundle they come all wrapped together and you pull one out and it gets a little bit tangled so I separated them and held each one with a clip so that way I can just grab what I want these um, currently are the long ones actually I got a short one in there and these are long and I have some shorter ones over here um, now, I'll talk about the different lengths in just a minute and when to use them. Here's a bundle, um, go up right to the floor. Um, I have them hooked up with a big clip and they're just hanging. And it's a little bit easier to pull one out from that. Um, but I kind of separated the long from the short and these are, I think, those are the long ones. Okay. So that's another way to kind of organize them and it's when I want to pull one out I just loosen loosen this clip and then I can pull one out. Now I'm going to be sitting on my ottoman because it's about the right height um, but he would sit in a chair because this the, the sofa and the ottoman was much too low for his old bones so he had to sit into a regular um, chair from the table um, but still made it hard for him because he had to bend over with his back and reach with his arms which made it hard but I'm gonna sit on the ottoman so you'll see my process because it's the right height that I need all right this is where I last left off right there and um, I want to overlap my next piece you might say well don't end there but the next piece is gonna I'm gonna probably start it right back here and it will cross over that so um, what I do is when I'm when I'm gonna overlap I want this to be the same as this last row because it's gonna I'm gonna slip it right up on top of this and that way it'll be wrapped right around like that okay so that will that will hide that end now I don't have to start all the way at the other side I could start somewhere here in the middle because I just want to make sure that it's a little it could, it could even start right here underneath here because um, I just want to overlap this part way so I'm just going to copy what I've got done going here. I'm just going to show you. See, see, I'm under three, over three. I'm going to just do the same thing. And that's what the herring pattern is. It's three, three, and three. Three over, three under, three over, three under. I'll talk about starting, how to start in a moment. Okay, so I've got it the same as that. So I'm going to pull it all the way until I come to the end and I want it to be underneath so I can hide that end okay right now it's side by side but I want to get this to be up on top so this is where I use my knife and use this tool to kind of wedge it up and it does take a little bit more effort to get it up on top. I think I can pull that part. Okay, 
and then we get it up on top of that other one so that it hides. take a little bit of work a little bit of work to get it all the way on top I'm recording. Okay, right there. This thing is edge is getting frayed. So we'll cut it off. Because I don't want to fray. <coughs> I don't want to fray edge. a little work to get that first piece um, on top of the previous row um, but it's well worth it because it's going to make the thing look continuous and you will hide your starts and your stops I was like I was like that okay just about just about got it okay we have started it and that also makes it kind of tight See, I can't pull it very well because it's pretty tight. All right, now I just need to get my end underneath this so we can wrap it around the other side. All right, I'm going to show you how I flip the chair. Now, flip the chair, I turn it around, and then I get back down like this. And now I start on this side. See, this makes, this low um, ottoman makes the perfect height so I can have this right close to me so I'm not bending over it and hurting my back. But this, this works great for me. The chair would be a little bit too low for him. And this is a rocking chair that we're working on. So I flip the chair over. Um, we are, the cane has a rounded side and it has a flat side. You, we want the rounded side out. And I like to slide back like this so that I make sure I don't twist my reed cane, that I don't twist my cane as it comes around. All right, now, 
We want to keep the same pattern going. And if you look, it's sort of like a stair step pattern. And it's it's three, 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 but the starting place is the most important thing. Um, on this side, you can see three over, three under, three over, three under. So this one's gonna go over. Now, this is three, two, one. See, three, three over, one, two, three. Two over, one. So it's three, two, one, th three, two, one. So this is three, two, so I just go over one. Now, that's, I always like to double check. So I slip it in there, then I pull it up, and I make sure that I still have my stair step pattern. The last previous row went in here, so it's one step to the left. This needs to go on that side. Okay, so that looks good. Now, you don't wanna weave it right here because it's, it's really tight. You can, it feels like a drum here. So what I do is I go down below and I weave it sort of at, a, at an angle. I need to back out a little bit more so you can see that. I kind of weave it at an angle, then I, then I pull it up this way. So let me show you how that works. Um, also another thing I forgot to mention, a water spray bottle. It's, you, need to keep, you need to keep it wet. Now, You'll notice right here, I have a loose end. That's because this is where two pieces are stapled together. This staple is not even holding anymore. So in that case, we'll pull that staple right out because it's not even holding. Um, I just need to hope, try, hope, try to keep that, hope that holds together. Um, but eventually this will get uh, woven in and we won't even have to worry about that staple. We could probably pull it out. Sometimes you see staples See that staple? It's got two points. You have to be careful that when you're sliding this back this way that you don't catch on the staples. And there are a lot of staples in this area. So I have to be very careful. Okay, so here we go. Three under. Three over. Three under. Three over. Three under. Three over. Three under. Um, three over, three under, three over, three under, three over, three under, three over, three under, and looks like we got one, two, three. That looks good. Now, now that I got that that much through, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. And as I slide it back, I want to be very careful wherever there are staples because, like, see that staple? It's poking up. And it could potentially create a problem. So I want to be very careful coming over that. Once I get past where the staples are, and I can pull it all the way through. All right. And this is where this tool comes in very handy. I want to bring it in a little closer. And before I pull it too tight, I want to make sure it's tight there. Now remember, we just started on that last row, so we don't want to pull too hard because it might pull it loose, even though it's pretty tight because it's, it's overlapping one on top of the other. That makes it fit nice and tight. I'm going to pull it just a little bit more. I'm going to push this all the way up. Oh dear, did I just break something? It is important to keep it wet. I'm afraid I just broke it. Oh, that is maddening. All right. Well, that gives you, that gives me a chance to show you what to do when something gets broken. This has happened before. I don't think I had this wet enough. So it broke right there underneath that. I also see that this is attached there. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to pull this off. Let me pull the staples out. You know, that's another thing that really ad I admired about the old man. Whenever we'd have a problem and we had to pull something out or had to restart or 
fix it because one time when he was using this and it wasn't wet enough and he pressed with the wrong angle and the edge broke one of those it um snapped one of our runners after we just got started up here he didn't get discouraged he was just like oh well you know and we had to go back and pull things apart and fix it okay i think oh, well, that just broke the staple completely in half. All right. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut a piece with my scraps a little bit longer. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try to weave it in underneath this, I hope. <laughs> That's going to be tricky. And I want it to make it extra long so it overlaps there. I'm going to try. I hope this works. Another tool that is needed is a stapler. Now the old man bought this one, but it's a very cheap stapler and it doesn't work great. So we wound up using this old timey metal heavy stapler that I had. It actually belonged to my, my husband's mom. And this works great. So that's how we, we attach these together. Okay, I have soaked. I have soaked our piece that we're going to insert and before I step it on that side I'm going to see if I can work it in here. I'm going to try. I think I'll, I think I'll loosen up that. I'm going to loosen this piece up here. I want to put this underneath here if possible, which may be difficult. But if I can weave it. I'm going to put a staple right here temporary. And I'll probably take it out after a little bit. That's going to be, I need to loosen this up so I can get this underneath. All right, that's too long. I don't know if you can see that. Scissors. Nope, it's one of those pliers. Okay, scissors, we'd go to fall on the floor. All right, scissors. All right, that right here will be long enough. So we'll cut that off. And then we join this. I like to put two staples, try to make it as tight as I can. But it might wind up being a little bit loose, but it'll get tighter as it gets woven. So two staples to hold that. Now, very carefully, I'm going to slide this up. And this, I want it to be on top here. sure that when I use this that I don't push down like that because that would be too much of an angle and that could break it so I, I try to keep it really low the staple does show but I'll take that out after I go a couple of times around. 
Okay, so that's one fix. I need to get this down here before I turn the chair over. So flip it back and rotate the chair. And then we got this side. Okay, I always have to check my starting point. We have three under. Let me zoom in closer so you can see that. We have three under, three over, so we're going under. And um, I want to look at this area right here because these are the ones that go this way. So I need to be under here, and I think this. But let me check it. I'm going to make sure that I'm creating a stair step pattern there. Okay, that looks like it's going to go in right here, so that'll be good. Right. I checked it. Now I can go ahead and leave. And before I do any more damage, write it down. Three. And it was, these, these things were kind of, the ones running this way were very loose when we began the back of this chair, but right now they are starting to get tight. So I may not be able to use my fingers this way, at the way that I am right now. I might not be able to do that for too long, so I'd have to change mode and use the knife instead. But I just kind of push down on the ones that go underneath, pull up the ones that go on the top. I'm just trying to get the, the front end of this. Oh yes, here's another, you see this, okay. You see this, a staple um, kind of pulled out. So, where's the other end? <laughs> the other end is right here. This is supposed to be joined. Um, yeah, I could staple it back together. Or I could just leave it, because eventually it's gonna get wrapped in. Right now, I think I will pull out the staples that's not holding. Sometimes staples do fall out. That's where the needle nose pliers come in. But it's on the end, and I don't, it's not a problem, so I'm just gonna let that be, and when I get to that point, it'll be woven in. It's also a little bit frayed, so I'll probably have to cut off some of that. Okay, so I'm not worrying about that piece right now. I just need a focus where these staples are because I don't want the staples to rip anything up. It's feeling a little dry. So I'm going to spray it again. I do think it works better when it's a little bit wet. You can hear it squeak. That's a good thing. That means it's nice and tight. zoom into an area here. I just noticed this little piece sticking out right here. That was the top of where they overlapped. So I'm going to cut that like really, really close to, well, it kind of broke. That's why you need good scissors so that it hides that end. So we got this side, well, I got a couple places where it's just a little loose. So I want to just make it sure it's nice and tight. Turn it and pull it back down. Okay. 
Okay, again, I always want to check my beginning. This is three under, three over, so now I'm going to go under, and it goes three, two, one. So I think I have to go three under to start. I pull it up here and make sure that's going to fit right. That continues our diagonal line, so that looks good. So I've checked it, now I can continue. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.